Mr. Flake, you may proceed, sir. There's a great level of disappointment when it comes to dealing with Jamil here. You've been shown to be violent. You've been shown to be arrogant. You've also, the fact that you even showed up in this courtroom with a hoodie on, trying to look like some kind of thug or miscreant, is disturbing. You really... Judge, we are here for a sentencing for Mr. Forbes. Um, we have reviewed the PSI with Mr. Forbes. Um, he is, there are no corrections or changes to be made to the report as a whole. Um, we are asking that the court follow the recommendation. Uh, we also wanted to ask Ms. McDuffie, I wasn't able to send over um, an email, but we were asking for consideration to, for Haida to at least remain open, see how well Mr. Forbes is doing on probation. I know- Anything else from you, Ms. Akiriakon? Not at this time, Your Honor. We're just asking that the court follow the recommendation. I'm not likely to do that. Your Honor, so one thing, Mr. Um, Mr. Flake is present, and I believe he would like to make a statement. Um, I'm going to let him pretty much take the wheel um, with respect to those representations to the court. I just wanted to point out one thing, because I'm not sure if it was something that was um, listed in the report or obvious from the circumstances. But the context of this offense, um, I appreciate that the recommendation includes domestic violence programming, because that is the context of this event. What happened is that Mr. Forbes was convicted on um, a domestic violence related charge with Mr. Flake's daughter on July 20th of 22 in a 1481 district court. Um, apparently upset about that conviction. Uh, he was scheduled for sentencing in September and this offense happened right in the middle of that in August of, 20, um, August of 22, um, right in between that conviction and that sentencing time. So this message is somewhat retaliatory, I guess, um, in that context. So I appreciate the fact that even though it wasn't um, obvious in these circumstances that that programming was ordered because I think it's definitely necessary. With that, Mr. Flake is present to speak. Mr. Flake, you may proceed, sir. There's a great level of disappointment when it comes to dealing with Jamil here. You've been shown to be violent. You've been shown to be arrogant. You've also the fact that you even showed up in this courtroom with a hoodie on trying to look like some kind of thug or miscreant is disturbing. You literally sat up here, sent me a picture and told me that I must be disappointed as a father, disappointed in my daughter. My daughter, I've never been more proud of. My daughter is strong. My daughter is competent. You wrote my daughter's coattails. My daughter is a model. My daughter works hard. My daughter has pulled down an associate's degree. My daughter was dual enrolled. My daughter is a bright shining light, a source of pride for me. Now, since you wanna sit up here and try to talk about my disappointment, how does your mom feel about you right now? How does your stepfather feel? Your dad didn't even want anything to do with you. You don't hold down a decent job. You're violent towards women and yet you're a wimp when it comes to standing in front of me. You are a disappointment as a black man. You are a disappointment as a man, period. Again, surely your mother is disappointed in you. You're no good example to your siblings. You've run around and dragged this thing out forever trying to avoid even being held accountable. You can't even proclaim yourself Your Honor, guilty if I may. in this court. No, you may not. 
Okay. You tried to break my daughter. You tried to humiliate me by sending me those pictures. You had no right to do that to my daughter, and you were dead wrong for trying to do that to me. Not only am I disappointed, I'm angry. I really don't feel that six months is enough, but it is a start. I've literally reached out and tried to help you as one black man to another. And you do this. It's like slapping me. It's like spitting in my face. The next time you offend, this court might just not be as merciful. But I hope you take the time and realize that this kind of stuff will not be tolerated anymore. Thank you, Mr. Forbes. Is it true that you are going to waive your right to have a hearing in this matter and admit to the uh, violation and that you, as soon as I sentence you, uh, make contact with the victim in this particular case? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, sir, you sent the victim a text, no, I'm sorry, a Facebook message as soon as you were sentenced in in spite of my order to have no contact? I actually received an Instagram message from her first. I don't. I blocked her on Facebook and I got her phone numbers blocked and I got a text message from her second Instagram account. And I just replied saying congratulations. Like, you see exactly what I said. I just said congratulations, like, got what you wanted. I didn't know that, um, like, I knew I couldn't initiate contact, but I thought replying, like, is, I mean, you know, I thought if I replied, I wouldn't be in violation. I have no idea. If I would have known that, I would have never replied and I wouldn't have gotten this violation. All right, I, I find that uh, there's a knowing and willing admission to the violation of the probation. Are you satisfied, Ms. McDuffie? With the factual admission that it happened only, yes, Your Honor. That's my judge. Thank you. Miss, um, I carry, I can really, do you have anything to support the fact that uh, the, a, a message came to him first? Because the documentation that I have only shows his. All right. Him. Her. Correct, Your Honor. And and that's what I informed Mr. Forbes. When we first spoke about this while he was in custody, um, he stated that if he had known, he would have taken his own screenshots. We do not have any screenshots um, of his side of the messages that were received from him. Um, it just shows the very first message um, as, as shown. So no, Judge, we don't have anything to corroborate that. It, uh, it obviously has been difficult because he's in custody and he doesn't have access to any of his information. Um, and he didn't know about these charges um, until after the fact, after he was placed in custody or he went to, into custody. Ms. McDuffie, anything you want to say in this matter? Most definitely, Your Honor. So first and foremost, Mr. Forbes, I believe, was under a no contact order. Um, probably he was under a no contact order or should have been with um, Ms. Tajane Roberts from his other case, if nothing else. I understand that the case in this one was related somewhat uh, to that, but it was dealing with her father. However, he should have already been under no contact orders with her. Secondly, after he was he spent the sentencing itself, walking around, not really paying a lot of attention to what was being said. But there shouldn't be any confusion whatsoever with what he was ordered to do, because regardless of whether she reached out to him first, which I don't have any reason to believe that she did, he knew he was not supposed to talk to her. Nobody ever specified only initiating contact. And the content of what he said was to immediately victim blame her for him being in this case, in this situation. And as we discussed at the sentencing, he's here for his own actions and refused to take any responsibility for it even at the time. So to go to that victim with probably not even 15 minutes passing to say, congrats, you got what you wanted. And to suggest that she's somehow jealous of him being with somebody else just reaffirms everything that we have been concerned about from the very beginning. So it really doesn't matter um, whether she reached out to him first or not. He knew better to, than to do what he did. So that's 
my biggest issue um, is that there's still no insight, no acceptance of responsibility for his actions whatsoever. And to stand here today and say that had he known he wouldn't have done so holds absolutely no way to water with the people. It's documented, though, that she that no contact with the last case. She went up there herself. And a month prior before sentencing, I have text messages of her clearly stating that she wanted to get back with me. And I was clearly telling her I don't want to. She paid for a hotel a month before sentencing for us and everything. Like, I have all of that proof. And I kept telling her I don't want to be with her no more. So you you just now admitting to violating the contact no contact provisions of your bond because you had a no contact provision in this case, then as well. The no contact in the last case, she went up there and got the, the contact case, order. I don't care about the last case. I can't tell you what another judge is doing. I can tell you that. You were ordered by this court starting on January 25th to have no contact with her. Yeah, and I take full responsibility for replying to a text message. Yes. No, you just said on you just said here today that in the last 90 days, which was after January 25th, you were in a hotel with her. Oh, I said she wanted to get no, he, well, how would she know? How would he know? She texted me, she kept calling me off of block numbers, text free numbers. I have no reason to contact her. I don't want to be with her. And she knows this. I've been telling her since then. Ms. Ikeriak, really, anything else you want to say on behalf of your client? Um, your Honor, what we're going to be asking for um, in regards to sentencing, uh, Mr. Forbes, I think that if this situation has taught him anything, it's that this court is not... Um, inclined to accept uh, excuses or um, games when it comes to this particular situation. Mr. Forbes very much so understands um, the orders that have been placed on him. He is hopeful that the court will consider a release um, based on the original sentence. Um, I'm, I'm hoping maybe we could do increased um, uh, classes um, something to that effect, Your Honor, uh, that our, our request today is just in regards to the sentencing um, that the court consider not remanding him um, and still giving him an opportunity to complete probation. I know that this is extremely problematic because he was on probation with the other case. Um, it should be noted that that other case was he was found guilty at trial. Um, however, they were able to move forward with the trial without cooperation from the complaining witness in that case. Um, from Mr. Forbes, my understanding is that she was present at the trial um, supporting him the whole way, but there was still able to be some type of conviction um, for the charges based on the evidence that had been um, presented. I say that to say, Your Honor, that there this is a it's 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 a very unideal relationship i don't want to go as far as to call it toxic because i don't know the details and the intimate details um with that i don't know how else you could define toxic if this isn't toxic it's definitely a relationship that doesn't serve either party um and i, I mr forbes is he He's ready to move forward with probation. He's asking that the court give him an opportunity um, to do probation, um, to do whatever classes uh, may help him deal with whatever issues he's dealing with that has him repeating these behaviors that finds him in front of the court, especially when it comes to this particular um, complaining witness. I know it's difficult because Mr. Forbes says that he's taking full responsibility, but at the same time, um, he's making... Uh, some type of admission that removes some culpability or responsibility from himself. I don't think that he has fully grasped um, how his actions um, are affecting his outcomes. And I think that some classes that could be offered from probation could uh, allow him to see that and, and help him with accountabilities. I, I they're both young. He's young. I don't have his 
age in front of me, but that is his primary concern today, Judge. I, I instructed him. He understands that this isn't a situation that we can take to a hold a hearing for and that he has messed up once again. And he is pleading guilty and ready to take responsibility for that. And we're just asking in that responsibility that the court still give him an opportunity to do probation. Your Honor, I'm so sorry, but I have a request. So I just need to be able to answer this um, accurately um, on behalf of the court. I understand, obviously, this is not sentencing, so we are not in a position to have any sort of victim impact statement. Um, however, as you know, Mr. Calvin Flake, who spoke um, quite powerfully at the sentencing, um, is basically asking um, here behind the scenes that it's, even though there was an admission, there's allegations being made that are sort of evidentiary types of issues. And so if the things that are being raised with the claims of what his daughter did are coming into question with respect to how the court is going to act, I just he just needs to confirm whether or not he is able to um, provide any other documentation or speak or address this issue. Um, since those things, there, there is an admission with basically allegations built in. So I just need to be able to tell him, no, he he is or is not going to be able to speak to the court about this in any way. We're, we're going. No, we're, we're going forward with sentencing. I can figure out what's going on here without okay. any additional information. Your Honor. Yes. Um, I believe the father of the victim uh, made a statement that um, if we can go into a break room, I can go into more detail about this, oh, this particular violation. There. Um, the main thing that I heard is another opportunity for your client, Ms. Ikeri really to accept responsibility and not accept responsibility at the same time. I was very clear to have no contact. And his contact was not only um, immediate, reactionary to my sentence, but also a revictimization. Regardless of what anyone else has to say about that, that is my major problem. Whether she contacted him or he contacted her first. The fact of the matter is that in retaliation for what I did, he made comments that were intended to re-victimize despite everything I just said to him within less than 15 minutes. It's a direct and blatant disregard of my order. And if he wasn't already on probation would be contemptible. I agree with you that your client needs classes. He's going to start those classes in jail. Um, is, is he in MRT or anything like that while he's in custody right now? I'm in MRT. How long have you been in that? Um, I got in, I think, I want to say like a week or like a week and a half when I came in. And I'm like, I've done uh, 10 sessions already. And we can do, it's like Monday or Friday. And I'm on like my 10th session right now. Tomorrow would be my 11th session. I'm wondering if you're learning anything. I'm learning a lot. Um, it's definitely like opened my eyes to like a lot of um, like childhood stuff too. It's like probably caused me to like act and think a certain way and handle certain situations. It's definitely opened me up. I say that a lot. What was your favorite part of the So, um, this charge here is a 100, is it a 180 or a 90 day max? Let me see where we are. 180, Your Honor. And I initially gave you what, upfront 90 days? Yes. That was on July 6th.
So you're going to serve an additional 15 days at this point for the violation. I believe that the MRT program is a uh, six month program in the jail. If you violate again, you have any contact in any way, shape, or form through you, through a third party, through anyone else, you're going to be looking at just doing the time. Do you understand that part? Yes, ma'am. Just I, I won't have any type of contact, reply, or nothing. All right. I have one question. So you said, so my out date was the 19th of next month. So it would be that plus 15 days. That is correct. Okay. And then I just got to complete MRT when I get out. There is a, a there, there was a long list of things you need to do when you get out, sir. Okay. You're going to contact the probation department when you're done. And they'll go over that list of things with you so that you are clear on what needs to be done. Okay. You'll, okay. uh, you'll finish the MRT when you're out if you don't do anything else while you're in there. Okay. And I'll just go to uh, community corrections right up here. Correct. Exactly. Okay. All right. Thank All right. you.